Cody, getting back to you, before the break, I asked you a, a pointed question. With everything especially that you've revealed about the CIA, their entrenchments, the drug dealing, the government, the corruption, why should the average American have any trust, not only in the CIA, but then by extension, the government as a whole? Why should we have any trust in it? We shouldn't have any trust. You know, we, we should be vigilant and, uh, you know, learn to listen with your mind and compare many data points, uh, and hopefully they'll converge somewhere to the truth. But um, we're living in a sea right now of propaganda and deception. Uh, what we're facing now, you know, with Google and Twitter, Facebook, and all the media control, all the shadow government activities, the trillions of dollars that are missing from the Pentagon uh, budget that Donald Rumsfeld spoke about, about back uh, right before 9-11, um, all this points to this big black shadow government, and it's been growing and growing quietly and secretly like a tumor in the body of our country. And um, we should not trust any of it. We've been lied to over and over. Richard Nixon, look at him, you know, Vietnam. Look at the uh, all the uh, record crop of opium that was coming out of Afghanistan. We've been in there over, what, 15 years. We've been lied to and lied to and lied to over and over and over again. Colin Powell and the weapons of mass destruction, um, uh, the prelude to the Iraq war. All that was uh, disinformation and lies. Um, and so we're swimming in a sea of this stuff. And most Americans, I think, are fed up with it. A lot of them don't care, and they're apathetic. But um, I, I got a quote here from Abraham Lincoln. He says, this is in the book, uh, chapter 2, says, I am not bound to win, but I'm bound to be true. I am not bound to succeed, but I am bound to live. By the light that I have, I must stand with anybody that stands right and stand with him while he is right and part with him when he goes wrong. And, you know, we should not trust any of these politicians. We should not trust the bankers. The TARP bailout, 2008, is a classic example. Uh, the Troubled Asset Relief Program. The bankers all got fat, got big bonuses, and a lot of people lost their houses and lost their jobs. And the people are getting screwed, and the corporations and the bankers and the politicians are all getting fat. They're running our country into debt, decade after decade, both parties, Democrat, Republican. Um, they are looting our country slowly, and the corporations are growing bigger and bigger with more control. And we're lo losing more and more of our personal freedoms. And if this continues, we're going to fall into the new world order. I don't think we should trust any of them. We should be vigilant. And shows like yours and the other shows and, and people, uh, you know, researching and looking facts up for themselves, that's what we've got to do because you can't trust the mainstream media anymore. They've been caught lying over and over and over. One of the, one of the biggest lies, let's go a little deeper on just that thought. Um, Gary Webb, of course, is the reporter in the early 90s that basically broke the story that the biggest crack dealer in Los Angeles in the 90s was the CIA. Um, not from opinion, but from what you know and your experience in the CIA and, and all that you saw. Uh, first, is the CIA the biggest illegal drug dealer in America or drug pusher? Maybe that's a better way to put it. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, no question. that, 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 uh, that, what you're dealing with with, uh, Gary Webb, of course, he was found supposedly committed suicide. He's working for the San Jose Times. He had previously won a Pulitzer Prize. We have a little section in the book here about him. And he was breaking that story that, um, the Crips, uh, the gangs were getting their cocaine in LA from Nicaraguan guys. And the Nicaraguan guys turned out to be getting it from CIA. But that's how they do. They use fronts. You know, biker gangs, uh, cartels, uh, whatever they gotta do, uh, to get the drugs. I mean, look at Afghanistan. In 2017, they had the record, all time world record production of opium. Okay, where are you gonna sell that? Okay, that's one of the poorest countries in the world, and it has all that opium. And then over here in America, we have one of the biggest drug habits of any, uh, country in the world, and we've got all the money. So how are they gonna get it from there to here? 
and you know we can talk more about all that. But the international drug trade uh, is a big thing. The border wall down there, you know, that, that everyone's talking about now. Uh, the border wall is not going to make that big a difference until we deal with the underlying economic problems and the drugs. You know, uh, that's what's fueling a lot of the migrant stuff um, and the illegal crime there. Uh, the cartels are middlemen. Um, my girlfriend, uh, one of my girlfriends, uh, used to uh, work in Miami, and she had dinner one night with Pablo Escobar. You know, he was the biggest drug coke dealer in the whole world. And uh, I've been down through Columbia and all that on ops. But the CIA went down there and took over those operations. And they kicked out the Medellin and uh, Cartel and, and all the guys, uh, Pablo uh, Carrera, uh, uh, Jose, Jorge Ochoa, the Ochoa brothers, all of those guys were running the cartels and then the CIA uh, gradually took those businesses over, uh, and the flow of drugs, that, who controlled them, was changed. But they need this stuff for the black ops. And uh, they can't go to Congress and get money, you know, to run pedophile rings or sex slave rings around the country or to murder or assassinate people in, in foreign countries extrajudiciously and unconstitutionally. So they, they need the black ops money, and drugs and arms are the two ways that they get that. But um, Gary Webb is. I, I just want to say I have friends uh, that were in LAPD, uh, Los Angeles Police Department. They were in the narcotics unit. Been there 20 years. Good close f- friends of mine, like Mike, Michael Rupert. Some of your listeners may know him. You can uh, Google some some stuff up about him on the internet. But he knew Gary Webb personally, and he told me. Um, all kinds of stuff that that they had CIA agents inside the LAPD, and whenever they were making busts, you know, they make busts on the lower guys, and then they start going up to the higher ones. Uh, the CIA guy would order them off of certain busts because those people were working as fronts or cutouts for the CIA's drugs. And so, um, so the, said, yeah, go ahead. So the war on drugs was, uh, so the war on drugs was an effort to cut the off the competition, not to stop drugs. It was to kill competition. Yeah, the war on drugs did several things. You know, they built up a big prison system here in the United States. Um, the DEA was expanded, and on the one hand, the government through the DEA was trying to stop the drugs. And then on the other hand, you know, the above board or the white operations, that was DEA, you know, trying to stop the drugs. And then on the uh, black or or dark uh, black ops part of it, the CIA is bringing them in. And they flew on train lo- uh, plane loads of stuff in, Air Force bases, the stuff at the MENA airport, you know, in Arkansas. We talked, there's a section in here about the book, how they use C-123s with Barry Seal as the contract pilot to bring up uh, that stuff. So Hold that thought. Uh, we got a break on the other side. Just quickly, yes or no, are the rumors about Clinton's true there in Arkansas? Yes, a lot of the rumors. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thepowerhour.com. Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Cody, C O D Y, Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Please email him if you'd like a copy of his book, Choosing the Light. That's really what we're, where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we can choose tyranny. We can choose freedom. We can choose Satanism. We can choose, uh, Christianity, the purest form of it. I mean, your divinity or you're just an animal. I mean, all these things are juxtaposed against each other and our choice is right here. And an illusion has been placed up upon us, in front of us, to make us see the world in a certain way. And it's really not true. It is not true. It is not true. And I've had so many people tell me, well, if this was true, then somebody would say something about it or somebody would know. Well, somebody has said something about it. Somebody does know. There's hundreds of whistleblowers, very important whistleblowers. Cody Snodgrass is one of them. Uh, he gets marginalized. He gets censored. He gets what have you. Um, Cody, maybe what's the most important thing about the drug trade? Uh, we don't, don't go into too much detail, but about the drugs that we need to know, maybe don't know. Boy, that's a, a really good question. Um, the main thing is that 
clandestine black ops, um, they have to have funding sources. And they don't want Congress to know what they're doing a lot of times. And so they need black ops money to conduct their operations. Um, and the, the best source of a lot of money real quick is drugs and arms. And so you find the CIA showing up again and again, like uh, they did in Vietnam with the uh, triad opium, you know, and they were smuggling uh, some of that stuff back in the, in the body cavities of our servicemen. Um, there were multiply nested operations with uh, CIA agent Ted Shackley and General Richard Secord. Uh, they later went to Costa Rica. But, you know, that, that, that in a nutshell... Uh, it's a worldwide business, uh, you know, like a big octopus, and uh, it's for money, and a lot of money real quick. That's where the big money is, is in, in drugs and arms. Then the pharmaceutical business, that's all the white the white ops, you know, Bayer, Lilly, Roach, all the pharmaceuticals. That's hundreds of billions of dollars every year in the white market, but the black market is um, – is a way to make a lot of money, and that's what they do, covert money. And then they can use it how they want and wash it through front companies and so forth. Just to be clear, I asked you this before, but I want to ask you again to be clear. The CIA is the biggest drug, illegal drug dealer in this country. Is that true or false? Well, I'd say it's true, but I, I want to qualify that. You know, not everyone in the CIA is involved in that. I mean... They're classified black operations. Some of them are not even sanctioned by the CIA. And, and there's individual people within it that's doing it. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of good people in the CIA. But, you, you know, when you make a blanket caveat thing like that where, where it's just one thing, there are elements in the CIA that are heavily involved in, in uh, like the opium from Afghanistan. And so... Uh, um, they are. So it's a frag. So it's, there's fragment. It's a fragmented. Uh, the the framework that allows this to happen is it not necessarily well. It's in the CIA, but it's subgroups of the CIA who are just. It's deep state operating under the guise or under the framework of the CIA. Maybe that's a better way to describe it. Yeah, that would be a good way to describe it. But the work, they're heavily Let's involved talk- in large quantities of you know the cocaine and the heroin and, and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about the media. Okay. Um, for average, you know, mom and pop uh, Smith that are sitting home and they go along, they watch Fox News at night or CNN at night, and they just watch the news. How misled are they? How controlled really is the corporate media that we see? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, in the late 40s and the early 50s, TV, television was replacing radio here in the U.S. And uh, back then... You know, in 1948, Congress passed the Smith Month Act. Uh, it authorized the U.S. State Department to disseminate propaganda outside the United States, but specifically for better to do so inside. So in response to that, CIA cooked up its Operation Mockingbird. That was the code name uh, to control or penetrate our own U.S. media. And um, that operation was designed to plant disinformation in the media, and it was a classic counterintelligence tactic. And so, you know, there were a lot of people involved in this. Uh, the CIA efforts were headed up by Alan Dulles, Frank Weisner, Washington Post, Philip Graham, CIA Director, Richard Helms, so forth, so on. And what they did was they planted um, media assets, they called them, which were 400 journalists. And they put them in Time, Newsweek, United Press International, ABC, CBS, NBC, UPI, Copley News Service, Scripps Howard, Associated Press, Hearst Newspapers, Reuters, etc. And so um, what they've done is, is performed a secret takeover of the media where they can control, first the CIA controls the information at the source, and then they can tweak it or twist it uh, and leak it out through their contacts in the media and disseminate what they want the American people to know. Uh, an example, you know, um, uh, the director of Central Intelligence, uh, William Colby, um, he testified 
I think I was at the Frank Church Committee in 75, I believe. Um, yes. Yes, 75. There, yes. Yeah, 400, that 400, over 400 CIA agents were active in the U.S. media to help control the reported content in American mainstream magazines, newspapers, and TV. And so, so the point that you gotta think about is that our information now, when you fast forward to 2019, uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all the big, uh, telecom companies, Verizon, AT&T, um, they were all secretly penetrated after, uh, the, uh, 9-11 attacks, 2001, when, uh, George Bush Jr. covertly, you know, he secretly ordered NSA to tap and they use the fiber optic taps on all the telecom feeds. We have a section in the book here about Joe Nazio, who was a QS executive, and uh, what happened to him when he wouldn't cooperate with, uh, you know, with this covert program to spy on Americans. And um, what happened to him? They planted him with false evidence, and he gets sentenced into six and a half years in prison. And so, anyway, to, to answer it in a nutshell, there has been decades of covert manipulation and control by CIA of uh, our media. And now they've, they've also worked with uh, Microsoft and others to infiltrate and put back doors in the software uh, and, and uh, tap, you know, the, the uh, fiber optic cables, Verizon, AT&T. So we're under a massive deal of censorship on the one side, okay, and it's mostly covert censorship, and then also on the other side a massive propaganda machine. And what we're facing here is the biggest infor information manipulation machine ever in the history of the world. And all the new technology and the new computers and the 5G that's coming out is really a, music. Hold tight. Cool, a weaponized information control. If Adolf Hitler had this stuff, he would have used it and loved it. We, uh, we'll be right back. We'll continue right there with that point. Uh, Cody Snodgrass, the book, Choosing the Light. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Talking to Cody Snodgrass, the book is Choosing the Light. Um, you got to go through some machinations to get it. You got to email Cody, Cody Golden Elk at yahoo.com, Cody Golden Elk at yahoo.com, and then he, he can arrange to send it to you. Literally. Every website that puts this up that gets gets crashed, the the payment gateway gets stolen, or one or the other, or some other various nefarious uh, thing. Um, this book is important. Please uh, reach out to Cody and try to get a hold of it. Uh, Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo dot com. Email him directly. Put in the subject, you know, the book or choosing the light or buy the book, and uh, go for it. Um, following up with what we talked about, the CIA's control of media. Um, you we you talked about just to be clear that the CIA or offshoots or sub shoots of the CIA are the biggest drug dealers in America illegal drug dealers they're using it for money their motives are money um, you know if I bite into an apple and, and the part of it is rotten uh, I throw the whole apple away same thing with a loaf of bread I mean are we to the point with the CIA it's just so how can we have any how can we have any confidence as an institution obviously there's many good many many good people in the CIA how can we have any confidence in it as an institution yeah I've, I've had people from the IG's office the inspector general's office of CIA right here in my house you know and they're good friends of mine and they're some of the most moral best people there is you know they're really good people but there's also the dark nefarious elements uh in there and you know in 1947 when the CIA was created um harry truman the president later on said he wished you know he had misgivings about it and you know the predecessor to that was the oss the office of strategic services and um then it was more flair into the cia but what's happened is um, the, the power, it's run amok. Um, there is no oversight, very little accountability. And, you know, they get a budget from Congress every year, but then there's the black budget that they're involved in with the drug dealing and the arms dealing and all that. Um, and, and with that comes no oversight. 
And the danger of that is that they can do things overseas and conduct operations that are extrajudicial and unconstitutional. And in my opinion, you know, the CIA should be restructured and there should be um, more controls on it. You know, President Kennedy, uh, about 10 days before he was uh, assassinated in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963, sent a memo uh, to the Joint Chiefs, and he wanted to disband the CIA. And, uh, you know, he was really pissed off about what had happened at the Bay of Pigs down in Cuba and all that. But, you know, to make a long story short, um, there is more and more unaccountability in the black operations worldwide. And it's, it's grown out of control. And they do things in our name. Uh, and then the American people back here don't know what's going on. And then they get lied to and the media control and everything. And we don't even know half of what our own government is doing. And that's a danger. Well, let's talk about the media and the, the amount of control, the amount of propaganda. You made a comment to me when I talked to you uh, earlier today. You said the amount of control in our media, the amount of brainwashing slash propaganda right now is more so than at any time in the Iron Curtain. Is, is that true? Yeah. yeah, well, you know, in 2013, we talked previously about the Smith Month Act in 1948. And then later in 2013, a lot of people don't know this, <clears throat> in the National Defense Authorization Act um, that was passed in Congress, uh, that act in, inside of it was a hidden, a little-known thing, was the Smith Month Modernization Act 2012. And that gave the CIA even more power to propagandize the American people and um, lifted the, uh, you know, the ban on the domestic uh, deception and propaganda. And so it allowed them to do that. And, you know, the Soviet Union, all governments use strategic deception and propaganda. Um, you know, our own uh, at Fort Bragg, you know, we have the fourth and the sixth uh, special operations groups, the PSYOPs groups psychological operations, and they've worked around the, the world, you know, in Vietnam and in Bosnia, Bosnia, Panama, all around, and their job is to uh, propagandize the civilian populations of whatever uh, nation we're in for specific uh, goals. And, um, you know, they, they do it here to us. They do it to our enemies. Um and it's getting what Cody Cody let me stop you right there in America let's not let's go from foreign come to America what is the goal here what are their what is their aim here in this country well they have multiply nested aims but overall the aim is to control the information that the American public sees and thereby you know they're mind controlling uh, the objective of mind control is to condition a subject in such a way that they end up acting without consciously thinking. And so they, they use very subtle tactics, um, and they condition the American population's mind to think a certain way to go along with certain agendas. And those agendas are generally favorable to the banking establishments, to the military-industrial complex that our uh, outgoing president, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower, warned us about in his famous uh, farewell speech, um, to make, to put a good light on all these, like Monsanto, you know, the big uh, agribusiness company. Um, they're actually causing a lot of damage with their glyphosate uh, and their Roundup Ready, uh, which have, have carcinogenic uh, properties, but they can spin uh, the information and leave out the bad stuff and, and put us, you know, show us the good stuff. And that way they control our minds and condition us. And then the censorship, on the other hand, keeps the truth away from people. And that conditions their minds. So the overall goal is mind control. Pure and simple. Um, let me, the other day, we put the kids to bed, my wife and I, the children to bed, and we watched a Bourne movie. It's been a while since I've seen them. Great movies. And my wife made the comment, like, oh, my gosh, is it is it that bad? You know, is this really? How accurate are those Bourne movies? Well, in my opinion, I've seen them all. Um, I think they're a pretty good Hollywood representation of real 
uh, black ops. Um, you know, there was Operation Paperclip. Your listeners can Google this up. That brought uh, hundreds of Nazi scientists over to the U.S. after uh, at the close of World War II, and they had been conducting a lot of mind control experiments. Uh, Joseph Mengele was later called Dr. Green here in the U.S. That was his cover name. He was the angel of death at Auschwitz, and they conducted a lot of experiments on people, and that morphed into what they call the MK Ultra project. That was a CI project, a uh, mind control project. And it went on for decades uh, after World War II, and it had 149 sub-projects. One of them uh, was Operation Monarch, Operation Spellbinder. That created sleeper assassins like the Jason Bourne thing you're talking about. And Operation Often, which uh, harnesses the power of occult and magic. They... Uh, Many of these sub-projects uh, were funded through front companies uh, and, and front institutions like the Stanford Research Institute, uh, Stanford University. They use the psychological department uh, for cover. Uh, also up in McGill University in Canada, um, they use the psychiatric wings of hospitals there. Uh, to conduct these experiments. And people can Google this stuff up. We have a section in the book, Chapter 10, is a, uh, about CI mind control, and it traces the development of this stuff. But those Jason Bourne movies are pretty accurate because they did, in fact, create alter personalities, and they would subject a, a person to trauma of, of a certain kind, and that works off what we call the CDT. It's the cognitive dissonance threshold. Every person, when their mind gets too much trauma, it has a protective mechanism which blanks out the mind. And at that point, you can then create an alter personality. And the CI was experimenting with that to create uh, assassins that could be controlled to flip personalities. That way, if, uh, for instance, the Soviets captured them and they were using their new classes of interrogation drugs in the Cold War, um, you know, to interrogate the subject, um, if they didn't have the trigger or the code that flipped the assassins' minds, um, they could torture them to death and they would not know or remember what their mission was. And so, this was all highly classified stuff, and like I said, there was 149 different sub-projects. Some of them, uh, to this day, are classified, uh, and we still don't know. An example of that is the sub, sub MK Ultra sub-projects 144, 145. That was in 1963. Those are unknown. They're still classified. One of them, the MK Ultra project uh, sub-project 136 in 1961, that dealt with ESP research. Experimental analysis of ESP. And that was to evaluate, evaluate the possibility of using ESP in the intelligence fields. The contractor and location of, of who uh, did these experiments is still redacted and classified. But um, the, the cover cutout that they were using to cover all this up in 136, the subproject, is Society for Investigation of Human Ecology. That was the CIA's front, you know, for this type of thing. So the Jason Bourne thing is real. It's a good Hollywood representation of of um, what a mind control assassin does. And you recall in the movies, you know, he, he has bits and, and memories coming back. And that was one of the problems the CIA had when they created a split personality, uh, like in the Monarch mind control program. They used ritual sexual abuse to break the CDT threshold and then create um, sex slaves like Kathy O'Brien. She wrote the book uh, Transformation of America with Mark Phillips. Um, anyway, when they when they split a person's mind uh, and then create these alters, alter personalities, then they had trouble um, locking them in and keeping them that way. Um, so they had to reinforce the programming. And as the decades went by from the 50s and the 60s into the 70s, um, they learned better and more techniques to cement those those uh, programs in. And then they instituted a program where they would, uh, you know, brainwash someone to commit suicide if they ever did try to uh, figure out that they'd been mind controlled. And so it's a vast area, and people can Google it up, but it's absolutely real, and those movies are a very good example of it. 
We're to another break. We got a short segment coming up. Um, the entertainment industry, we hear a lot of things and we see openly a lot of satanic symbolism. Of the school, the public schools, government schools, what role do they play? Is it infiltrated there? Let's talk about that on the other side more with Cody Snodgrass. The book is Choosing the Light. Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Email him. You can get a copy of the book. Very important. Don't rely on Google. Get his book. Talking to Cody Snodgrass. Short segment coming up here, Cody. Um, you know, I've had Kevin Shipp on the show. I mean, he, we interviewed, he told me flat out that there's a lot of Satanists or Luciferians or whatever you want to call in the CIA. We're seeing the entertainment industry is using certainly a cultish symbolism and God only knows what in the world's going on there. And even the school system now, we're seeing a lot more brought into public schools. Uh, what do you know about any of that? Is, is this a cultism? Is this Satanism being moved in those areas? Right. It absolutely is. Kevin Ship's a great guy. He's trying at great risk to himself and his family, by the way, to get the truth out. And the CIA does have uh, elements of that in it. Again, you know, you, I'm making the caveat, not everyone in the CIA is bad, but there is that at dark, demonic uh, thing in there. And a lot of it, if you trace the roots of it back, Hitler... Adolf Hitler had the SS occult division inside the SS, and they were into demonic worship, Satanism, and so forth. They went to museums when the Nazis were moving through Europe, uh, gathering up the paintings and the gold and so forth. They got the Spear of Lazarus, for instance. That's the spear that the Romans used to pierce Christ uh, while he was on the cross, and it was believed that Anyone that had that blood of Christ on the spear, the armies would be invincible. So he had the SS, the cult division, go get all that. And then they went to Greece, the Oracle at Delphi there, and they looted out some of those artifacts. And this was all for demonic, satanic power. And then when the Allies were closing in and Nazi Germany was falling, many of those uh, SS occult officers and intelligence officers they were in the occult division, were actually moved in Operation Paperclip, and they were brought here to the United States and given false names and false identities, cover identities. And so that's how that element got into the CIA. Um, they brought it with them from Nazi Germany, and they they, are, they use are all... Are they using it in public schools? Yeah. Do are they using that in public schools also? Are they, sorry, are they using that, those mind control techniques or some of those things? Are you, they using me in public schools also? Well, I don't have any operational knowledge of it myself. However, I've talked to people, uh, in the intelligence field that said there have been some covert tests done, uh, in our American schools, uh, where they introduce psychotronic devices in the ceiling. And they bombed the kids underneath, you know, with certain frequencies to see how they would react in mass. And that the teachers there were actually CIA agents and or assets undercover. And their, their cover was being a teacher. And so they did use unsuspecting kids. Also, Stan Dio, uh, who was at the U.S. Air Force Academy here, um, he said that um, he uncovered certain mind control programs that the CIA was conducting covertly on the cadets to see uh, how their manipulation techniques worked. And so this mind control stuff is very pervasive. It went through all aspects of schools, churches, um, Catholic dioceses, you know, psychological departments like Stanford Research. Um, it, it, it was huge. And we don't know all of it. Uh, we only know parts of it that have been declassified. But it's definitely you there. You mentioned Kathy O'Brien. Yeah. You mentioned Kathy O'Brien in her book, Transformation of America. Uh, you actually met Kathy O'Brien. Maybe talk about that a little bit. Is she is she telling the truth there? Is her book accurate? Yeah, I held her, her hand, you know, and looked in her eyes. Uh, I've attended some of her lectures. Um, and I believe, you know, by looking at her, and like I said, connecting with her and holding her hand and looking her in the eye and listening to the things she said, I believe that she's telling the truth. I, I get that question asked a lot. Is, is Kathy O'Brien some nut case or, you know, she's some CIA-controlled sex slave, uh, you know, that's just talking a bunch of BS? Well, no, she's not. Uh, the stuff she's saying is real. Her mind was fragmented. 
You know, she was subjected to horrendous sexual abuse in the uh, Monarch uh, Mind Control Program, and so was her daughter, Kelly. Uh, they were also given what they call the tranquility drugs down at NASA. There are variations of opiate-based psychedelics which are used to help induce altered states of consciousness. Um, because the CIA experimented with many ways to do that, uh, drugs, electroshock, drugs and electroshock, sexual abuse, so, and so forth. So, um, you know, our SEER program, Survival, Evasion, Resistance, Escape, some of the methods uh, that are taught in those to our military guys, like the Navy SEALs and Delta Force, Army Rangers, so forth, that stuff did come from some of this research. I mean, some of this research helped our country you know, fight the Soviets in the Cold War, and they helped some of our agents resist the torture and the uh, mind control techniques, uh, you know, and the drug Soviets were using. The Navy had a project music. at Chatter back in 19... 19- where they were teaching our guys how to resist the new Soviet drugs. So some of this stuff is good, and some of it's bad. On the other side, well, more with us, uh, Sody. Cody Snodgrass, uh, I just, I'm dumbfounded. I mean, this is just, it's massive. This is massive. There is good and bad having somebody like uh, Cody on the Power Hour. I mean, obviously the good is the quality of source he is, the proven proven source he is, the amount of knowledge, the amount of direct knowledge dealing with these people, dealing uh, from operational standpoint and having so many uh, connections to be able to put the dots together in such a way that very, very few people can that you'll ever get to hear from. That's a great. The bad side is everything he's bringing up we can talk about for two hours straight. I mean, and, and then just uh, skim the surface if you really want to know about it. We'll have Cody on soon again. We'll pick one or two of these topics, and we'll just focus on that only uh, because the lo- the level of depth on each one of these things is staggering. Uh, I encourage you. I implore you. Uh, I know Cody says a lot, you know, you can go Google this, Google that. Look, we're getting to the point with censorship, and we're seeing with YouTube, what have you, our emails, everything. Cody hadn't even told you of, of a fourth of what he's dealt with. What we, we haven't told you all the things that we deal with here. You know about the YouTube channel, of course. People who are telling the truth are getting attacked unlike any time ever. Cody's already told you this is the biggest information control grid ever formed in the history of the recorded world. That's what we're dealing with. And your very uh, perception and view into reality is being studied, is being manipulated for an end result. Please get this book, Choosing the Light, Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Unfortunately, you got to go, this is how you got to get it. Uh, you won't find it at Barnes & Noble. That's for darn sure. Email him, put in the subject, you know, the book, buy the book, choosing the light, what have you, and then arrange to mail him the money, and you have to go snail mail. That's it. That's what, You believe that? That's where we are with him. And that's yeah, how we, important his information is. We've been censored into the Stone Age. Uh, every time we raise our digital head, they hit our websites, attack them, shut them down. They shut our PayPal's down over and over and over. We fix them. They shut them down. We fix them. They shut them down. The Light on Conspiracies website over in Europe that we had, um, they sent a weaponized computer virus to it and put it down for five weeks. We had four uh, systems engineers type people, I mean professional computer guys from four different countries trying to fix it. And um, they sent sleeper viruses in it. It was amazing. We And we finally got it up, and then we started selling books again. Then they hit our PayPal and shut it down, so we went to the snail mail route. But um, we got to get back to the, to the, you know, what's going on in a nutshell here. Um, is it, it's a spiritual battle between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. The Illuminati goal, uh, the New World Order people, um, they want a satanic world government. Um, they want to control everything on the earth, all the timber in the Amazon, all the opium in Afghanistan, the, the, the gas in the Niger Delta. Uh, all around the world, they want control of the food, the water, everything, and they want control of all the people. 
and the Georgia Guidestones, which some of you can look up uh, on the Internet, you know, they, they state that they want to reduce the world's population down to 500 million. And we got about 7 billion people on the planet now, so that's quite a leap. Um, how do they plan to do this? And you ask, you know, why the, the Satanism in the schools and the, and the things like Kev, Kevin Shipp, God bless his soul, you know, the, the things that he talks about. Um, we are desperately trying to wake people up. To the, to the simple truth that there is a dark, hidden, evil, satanic agenda at play in our world. Okay, there is light in this world too, but there's also darkness. And if we bury our heads and become apathetic to it, the New World Order is going to win. We're going to lose our freedoms here in America, and they will microchip our grandchildren. There's already a company in Sweden called Biohack, and they make the RFID, radio frequency identification, microchips that go up under your skin. And in the book here, we have a section on how they gave one of those to Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City so-called bomber, uh, covertly in a project with Lockheed Martin. And that was designed to use satellites that were called the BEAST. That's a Battle Engagement Area Simulator Tracker. It would read RFID chips. In this case, they were planted in these buttocks uh, with a, under the cover of anthrax injections and stuff. Um, and they can read them from space in real-time battlefield conditions, sand, smoke, oil well fires, and so forth. And they tested this stuff in uh, the January 91 Iraq war. Um, this stuff is real. Um, it's high tech. And their goal is to track everything and everybody on the earth. And we're going to lose our freedoms with this 5G grid that's coming up. Uh, the Agenda 21 cities, people can look that up on the Internet, too. But a lot of the AI algorithms are censoring this information and putting it on the back pages. So it's a big thing. It's a big thing we're facing. But we're trying to wake people up that uh, this mind control stuff is real, that microchips are real, they've been field testing this stuff, and they're going to implement it on a worldwide scale if we don't wake enough people up to stop them. Um, we talked about this earlier, uh, Cody, and I just want to get your thoughts on this on air. Uh, we talk about the Declaration of Independence quite a bit here, because I've thought about this as obviously you have. And most people I talk to, like yourself, who they're troubled. Deborah DeVaris is troubled. I mean, Kevin Chip, you're troubled in your spirit by what you're seeing and what you're looking. And you're looking, you know, what is the solution? You're almost desperate to get people, not to shake them. I don't know what the word is, to get them to see what you're seeing or see the point that you get and that you wish that you could just reach into their heart and kind of give them that spark. And we talk about who you are. And I've tried to boil this down, and I think the only, the only country that can do anything about this is the one who did something about it 250 years ago. Really, the only one is America. That spirit is here. We have a tradition. We have the Declaration of Independence. We have the Constitution. Uh, the Christian community here, whatever that means now, when you realize that this is not political, this is, they are trying to, uh, categorize you spiritually forevermore and encapsulate and control your soul. They want you to be a beast, a human, being a monster, a full definition, to be a cattle, basically in the field that they tag and control instead of a divinely created endowed being that the Declaration of Independence by law declares to be sovereign and free in this land. That is the war. That is the war. And you can break everything down from the frickin' meter made in the local municipalities to the Illuminati and the CIA and the deep state going on. It's a question of, are you endowed, are you the sovereign of this land, or are you a subject to this corporate uh, spiritual Luciferian takeover? To me, that's the whole thing. That's everything. Uh, get your thought, Cody Snodgrass. Well, you're absolutely right. Um this is uh, a spiritual war. In the front, very first page of this book, before that quote, uh, you know, by Martin Luther King, I have I have sworn 
upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. And that's what Thomas Jefferson said. And we have several quotes in here from uh, Patrick Henry and some of the founding fathers. But they, this New World Order elite, the Rothschild Banking Empire, the Rockefellers, um, these elites, these very wealthy uh, Illuminati-controlled groups um, have at their core a satanic evil, Luciferian desire to control and control everything. Okay, they use deception and lies to control, and we use truth, uh, you know, and freedom. Uh, the forces of light are in a battle with these people, and right now in America, we're fighting for her soul, uh, the spirit of this country that Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, and all of them fought for. But they have these New World Order people have secretly subjugated our government and moved in from a top-down pyramidal structure of control and have infiltrated our government, okay, and have taken it over through their corporations and their banks. And they're now they're trying to do it all around the world. And the end goal is to take over the whole world, okay? And so the question is, do you want a new world order and a new world based on control, deception, censorship, propaganda, uh, MK Ultra mind control deceptions and torture, you know, things like that. Or do you want a world based on freedom and love and trust and truth? And so at the heart of all this, they try to fragment our consciousness with fear. That's why so many false flags, 9-11, the Oklahoma City bombing, Sandy Hook, Parkland, the JFK assassinations, November 22nd, 63, his brother Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King. This is Martin Luther King Day, and he was assassinated. Anytime a light shows up, these dark ones try to squash it out. Okay? There's the music. I got one more segment, uh, Cody. My gosh, it's, it's very poetic what you're saying. Ladies and gentlemen, this man was offered a million dollars to blow up the OKC building. You don't think he knows what he's talking about? He knows. Stay tuned. One more segment with Cody Snodgrass. Those of you who say, well, I wish somebody would come out and just say, okay, th- somebody's come out. Somebody's stuck their neck out. Somebody's fought against the uh, the wind, spit into the wind, so to speak, as Jim Croce used to say, uh, to bring you information. His name is Cody Snodgrass. He's written a book, Choosing the Light. You've got to get it by emailing Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com, and you can get the book. And you need this book. And please do not rely on Google. I mean, they're the people who are the biggest enforcement arm of censoring that we've seen. And uh, how long will it be before that any history of the Declaration of Independence, of the Revolutionary War, how, you know, they'll say, well, that was just a, a little skirmish and they just wanted to control black people. That's what they'll say. They'll, they'll say something like that. They'll turn it into that or some other nominal thing. Please buy Cody's book. How much is the book, Cody? Yeah, we uh, sell it for $20 on a CD, and then we pay the shipping here in the U.S. Okay, perfect. Please support Cody, what he's doing. Please buy his book. It's uh, more than worthy. It's necessary for you. You're not doing Cody a favor. You're doing yourself and your family a favor. Ladies and gentlemen, all these signs, if, 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 we were discussing this during the break. Um, the signs are right there if you if you have eyes to hear or ears to hear and eyes to see, that's pretty much right there. Is it not, Cody, where we're at? Yeah, I mean, if you look up in the skies, we are being sprayed with a particulate, uh, nano-aluminum, barium, uh, so they call it chemtrails or geoengineering. Um, in, the, in the water, they've been putting fluoride in for years, which, by the way, the Nazis first uh, discovered all that back in Auschwitz and Dachau when they were housing prisoners. Um, they wanted a way to keep them docile, uh, you know, where they'd be smart enough to keep working, but, uh, you know, too apathetic to try to escape or anything. And so they created the fluoride thing. And so that helps dumb us down. And then the, the food is being poisoned with glyphosate, which is Roundup Ready through the Monsanto Corporation. Um, they're poisoning our, our air, our water, and our land. Um, the vaccines? The vaccines is another example of it. 
Um, so what, what, what's happening here is is this new world order push that George Bush Sr. talked about in his speech, you know, that famous speech he made back in the 90s when he said, read my lips, no new taxes. Um, he mentioned that, I think, 17 times in that speech about the new world order. We can see a new world order coming into view. Make no mistake about it. These people want total control of the whole world, okay? And they're going to use high technology and high science to do it. They're going to use deception and sleight of hand. They're going to trick you. They're going to con you. They're going to get you to believe that what they're doing is good for you. And really, they'll be handing you poisons, okay? And what, so what, Cody, you need to wake up. Cody, quickly on that. Quickly on that, what is the connection? Uh, because I've been screaming about where are the churches on this? Because this is a spiritual thing. This isn't political. This is spiritual. Why, why aren't the churches uh, speaking up right now? What role do they play in this deception? Well, the churches themselves have, some of them have been infiltrated. The dark ones like to hide behind the light. Okay? And the light is needed in the darkest places. Okay? But the dark ones hide behind the light, and some of the churches have been infiltrated. Um, some of them have been, it's like a sideshow, you know. Um, I have something here from uh, an Illuminati manual that's, that was never supposed to be, ever be out in public. And what they say in it, part of the excerpt here, when a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it by ridicule or death, whichever suits us best. And so they've used the churches as a way to attack the light. That's what the dark ones do. Their, their goal is to stop truth and to stop freedom and substitute deception and control. And so they can use the front of a church, just like the CIA used the front of McGill University up in Canada for their MKUltra programs. The dark ones can use the fronts of these churches to help destroy the light when the whole time they're pretending to bring the light. So you have to be very careful. Not all churches are involved. You know, uh, there are some really good ones. But it, this is a program across all levels, mental, spiritual, physical, and emotional. And they're attacking the light and the truth in all areas. And that's why we have to be aware and be vigilant. If, if you do want freedom, and you want your children to grow up in a in a good way where they're not having microchips put in their hand when they're eight months old or something and don't know any different. Um, we need to wake up to what these forces of darkness are doing. There's good in the world and there's evil in the world. But the only thing necessary for good to triumph, I mean for evil to triumph, is for good men to do nothing. So it's time got a for couple minutes, Cody. Uh, uh, Yes. We got a couple minutes, maybe two and a half. Uh, what can people do? What, besides waking up or, you know, get out of public school? I don't know. What, what, what can people do? Well, the first thing is to establish your own connection to the divine. Okay. Um, the, the New World Order people want to fragment our consciousness with fear. That's why they have all these false flag attacks, bombings, assassinations, wars, everything. You know, the bankers don't care much about uh, a particular conflict. They care about the debt that the conflict produces. And so what people can do is, is, is hold that connection to the divine, hold the light in your heart, okay, and stay with that and learn how to listen with your heart, not just your mind. Because in the mental realm, they'll, they'll feed your mind full of propaganda and deception like Project Mockingbird and, and countless others. So each person can hold that light and do where, go where that light directs you. Um, you know, this is a big thing uh, that we're up against. And we're all going to have to join together in the light. And you can feel if someone's lying to you. Most people have a built-in meter in their heart. Um, if they can quiet the chatter in their mind. And you can tell if you're being lied to on TV. Learn to look through these scams, these New World Order scams, and, and the propaganda on the TV, and seek truth yourself. And apathy is one of the things that will kill us all. Um, we, we have to wake up, and we have to be proactive in the light. 
And we have to demand truth and demand uh, integrity out of our politicians instead of this endless sea of corruption and lies uh, that we've been fed. So that's the first thing you have to do is, is hold that light and establish a good, strong connection to the divine. Um, and, and from that point, all this lower stuff on the earth will be easier, easier solved. Fantastic, Cody. There's the music. We've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, please check out his book, Cody Golden Elk at Yahoo.com. Uh,